church for being organized, doing many things in an organized way. So I think we have commonality there. This government works in an organized way. We inherited a confused situation. But we worked very hard in two, three years, three days today, to help organize this country. Debt restructuring, mission impossible, done. Restoring the mines, very difficult, done. Restoring the rule of law, by and large, done. But old habits die hard. We still have remnants of people who want to behave the way they behaved yesterday. We work together to clamp it down. Even when we change the laws, for example, criminals don't change quickly. The law was changed on motor vehicle theft, no bail. Some people still went ahead to steal cars, even when they knew that there would be no bail. So it's a continuing process. It's work in progress. So back to why we're here, we want to congratulate you, the diocesans, for the work you've been doing in your role in this church, in the communities, and in gathering here today to advance, to refine your mandate, to improve your mandate. We appreciate you as a church. We appreciate you as communities and as a country. Because what you do benefits all of us. You serve the community. Your theme is so appropriate, extremely appropriate. Serving communities better, acknowledging the variables which are external to us, exogenous to us, exerted on us because of climate change, sustainability issues. I want to thank those who chose this theme, those who dreamt of this theme, because it's a very, very important one. Improving communities, lives, but being aware that we must be sustainable in what we do. We must also indicate to you that the role of church, church in society, is important, has always been important in many respects, in many ways. Evangelizing our people, teaching our people values, how to be good people, good citizens. How you as citizens need to work with, live with each other, supporting each other. No two diocesans are exactly the same where you sit here. None. God endowed you differently. Now imagine 20 million people. Me, I'm married to 20 million plus husbands. And I know they're all different. They demand different things. And I and my cabinet, our government, can't meet those needs on our own. But working with the church, Catholics, diocesans like yourselves, Jesuits, others, and other churches. The Board of Christ is one. We will achieve a lot to better the lives of our people. The very communities that you are talking about. But the community starts with you as diocesans. You are a community. And then extends to others. We value this role. We value the service to community, society, our society. And for Bishop Muleng, I have said this to your colleagues when you came to see us at Stenhouse, Zambia Conference of Catholic Bishops. I emphasize the importance of partnership. I repeat that message. We're partners, we're not competitors. We're complementary. We serve the same population, as I said. After all, this president's cabinet, the majority of them are Catholics. This man, Minister of Home Affairs, this man, Minister of Technology, another man who is not here, Minister of Defense, they are all ex-Mukasa Seminary. These. So we call them priests in our cabinet. If the bishops were not there, I would have said we call them bishops. 
But since the bishops are there, we call them priests. Secretary of the Cabinet Congo is Catholic. Deputy Secretary to the Cabinet Economics, Sakalenga, is a Catholic. Deputy Secretary to the Cabinet Administration, Oliver Kalabu, is a Catholic. Now, how can there be a message out there that this UPND government is against the Catholic Church? That cannot be far from the truth. That's far from the truth. I, I repeat and put it correctly. That's far from the truth. So this government, by the way, all these have announced and many other cabinet ministers are appointed by this president. You think he was not aware that they were Catholics when he was appointing them? I was aware. But we are one team. One country, one team. So the issue of this government being against the Catholic Church is a fallacy. It is, a, is, it is an imagination of somebody. Yes, there could be one or two people who don't like a church. That's okay. But in a democracy, right, citizens choose. And once they choose, the ones chosen owe it to everybody. So please, I wanted to clarify this to you, the diocesans, because you are living with the community. You work with the community. Never should you feel that this government is against the work you do, it's against you, against the church. No. As I said, the Board of Christ is one. I'm advanced with myself. I have nothing against the Catholic. The new apostolic members, they are... Uh, what church are you? Avena <laughs> Kabusu, what church are you? Pentecost. He's also a cabinet minister, appointed by this Adventist, appoint, who appointed Catholics, who appointed new apostolic. So, Zobu, what church do you go to? Pentecost. You see, we're one. Why am I emphasizing this? Because I do read a lot. I check social media. I hear what people say. I'm here. You're hearing from the horse that your work, what you do, what the church does, this church, all our churches, is cherished. We have a drought this year. We must work together, not against each other, in saving lives out of hunger, number one. Number two, in increasing our sustainability, hang on, hang on, improving our Resilience, that's the word I was looking for. Energy, hydro is challenging us. We need to now look at solar and other sources of energy. It's an opportunity God has given us. That's how my mind works. In a crisis, flip the coin, you see the opportunities. Let's bring more solar. And I'm, plan I'm happy to say, here in the central province, we're putting 100 megawatts of solar in Chibombo. Here. Also, we need to farm differently, irrigation, agriculture. And I want to encourage the church, Bishop Mulenge and Bishop Kasson, we must preach that the church members must go into production, especially food production. We must say it without blinking. Facilities are there. Yes, PCIP may not be access to you, but the agricultural credit is there. Members of the Catholic Church who work for government, we have a facility for them agriculture credit. When I took office, the facility was being given at 18% interest. We put the interest down to 9%. So we want the members of this church to produce food, to do something. The facilities are there. We also have a private credit facility. One day I called all the banks into state house. I said, you have to make money available for agriculture, irrigation, agriculture. I said, okay, a church will do it. And I come from there. Most of you don't know, I used to be chairman of Barclays Bank at a young age, APSA now. So we use those networks to benefit the people. So they agreed to put money under the agricultural credit scheme to fund different things, mechanization, irrigation, uh, genetics, seed, fertilizer, all of that. And they've agreed to pull the interest down from 25, 26% to 12%. If it weren't for the drought, 
we were going to harvest the largest crop of maize in 2024. But God has different ideas, climate change, which is part of what you're doing in your conference. But we don't give up. Farmers, we farmers don't give up. We continue. So the message is that can we encourage the church members, groups to produce food? When we eat dinner tonight, remember somebody works to produce the food. So let's contribute to the food basket. The government will be there to support. What else did I want to talk about? I wanted to express my appreciation of the fact that you are organized. I mentioned it earlier. It's easy to work with organized groups than those that are a bit scattered, fragmented. So let's utilize this opportunity. You, for example, utilize the government facilities such as CDF, Constituents Development Fund, in the areas where you work as diocesans. There are communities that are in need of, say, a school, a health center. Doesn't matter who owns it, government or private, they're in need of water. The CDF is there, you must access it. This church, you, the diocesans, and this church and other churches must act, access CDF to put water at that school. Because that's your money. There is no money which is blue for those schools which are government and, and, and yellow for the schools or health centers that are run by the church or the communities that are green or red. We've changed the paradigm. These resources are for the community. So even you in your work, budget for accessing these facilities, you do the work that you can, you've raised funding, the gap CDF can fill. I've just given an example of water, a bowl, tank stand, tank, solar panel, if there's no electricity. And I encourage solar anyway, even where there's electricity. And the community will get the water. I make that call to, to you, the diocesans and the church. This is a partnership, this is the meaning of the partnership. There are many other facilities free education. You, the diocesans, are strong influencers in the communities. This president is standing here as head of state for one reason only, because I went to school on a government bursary. Otherwise, I would have been in Wengwa or Namwala today with eight wives <laughs> and looking after cattle. I'm not joking. The only reason I'm here and you elected me as head of state because I went to school under Kaunda's government bus. And that's why we brought back free education, scholarship schemes at the constituents level for kids going to secondary school. You are diocesans, you are priests, the bishops, you still have relatives. Let's encourage them to go to school through your influence that you carry as diocesans in addition to the work you're doing already. Because the free education is the, education is the greatest investment, equalizer, and indeed inheritance. So I want to use this opportunity to deliver that message to yourselves, that include that ask I'm making to influence the community to send their children to school. Skills training. That's why we have also increased bursaries, loans, meal allowances. That is the reason. So we can educate our population. Yes, Christian values, but also skills. Including those that can't go to Kuruma, that can't go to Mulungushi, but can go to artisanal schools to be plumbers, to, cap to be carpenters, to be electricians. Totally different way of looking at things. The economy needs these skills anyway. Society needs these skills, any these skills anyway. I said to Bishop Mulenga, this is a beautiful hall. Who put up these walls? Yes, the, the church put up the hall, raised money. But who put the brick and mortar? It's a brick there. Who roofed it? It's a carpenter. Ceiling, lighting, it's an electrician. Now we are sending our children in every constituency to these skills training centers. Encourage 
your members in their communities, their citizens. Encourage the church. Encourage non-Catholics. A church leader is always a church leader. Not just in the Catholic church, but in the community. That's my message. I could have said more because I think it's a rare opportunity for me to meet people like yourselves. But time is challenging us. I hope there will be another opportunity to meet. If not through me, if not me, but my ministers, my MPs, my DCs, and others. We make mistakes. We are your product. We come from the families that we evangelize. When we make mistakes, correct us. Because it's the right thing to do. But don't correct us by shouting at us in the newspapers and in social media. Interact with the nearest public sector worker close to you. Pass the message. Today, I met the bishops, two bishops, in fact, Bishop Mulenga in the presence of Bishop Kasonde. He gave me a checklist of 10 points, taking them away. I met your leaders. They gave me a list of points, two pages they gave me, very concise, very organized, clever. We we'll look at those. I think that's how civilized communities work. Yes, yes, I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm aware. <laughs> I'm aware. Thank you very much. So we'll take those lists now. we we'll work on them. Some items are for the Minister of Technology. Others are for the Minister of Home Affairs, like the cadres who misbehaved here in Kabwe, right in these grounds and in Pika. We do not support thuggery. What used to happen in the previous regime at Intercity, blood every day, bus stop, at Kulima Tower, no. Here in Kawe, I could not enter Kawe. The late, may he so rest in peace, Tutu Angulube used to make sure that if I'm passing through here, by that rail crossing, there are stones there. Every time I came to Kawe, you don't see that anymore. The situation has changed. It's much better. But we still have work to do. Old habits die hard, isn't it? Some of the cutters who were in PF throwing stones to us, they fused into UPND now, and they've continued. Some are UPND, but we will clamp them down. We need law and order. Let's work together in fighting corruption. Corruption is a thief. It steals desks from kids. It steals water from communities and medicines from hospitals. Let's work together. The fight against corruption diocesans has nothing to do with the church affiliation. Zero. Malos will say, not on, not on. Not on, not on. It has nothing to do with ethnicity, as some people like to claim. It has nothing to do with political affiliation. Zero. Corruption of the past, present, and the future. That's our enemy. So let's not, let's not divide ourselves. Let's not encourage our youth to do what the youth in Kenya have done. I see what people post. And by the way, those are crimes people commit. You can't hide behind a phone and Facebook or other social media to commit crimes. And I, I want to thank the British Prime Minister for clamping down on crim criminality on social media. Because criminality is criminality. Let's not encourage kids to go in the streets to go and kill somebody in the process to ban this nice war. Bishop Mulenga. If we allow our kids to go in the streets, the road is very near here. They will veer in here and burn this new war. What will we have benefited from? Sir, let's encourage our kids to get the jobs we are offering in education. Over 30,000 teachers in three years, three days. The largest ever medical staff the largest ever. We're employing Zambians from across the country, in the army, in the national service, in the police, indeed correctional services, and other public sector institutions. But more important, our focus is to create private sector jobs. Mulungush, the revival of Mulungush. Mulungush textiles. 
I'm proud to say Kabwe will have a new lease of life. Mulungush Textiles is back. This is not a joke. The eight trucks you saw yesterday are eight out of 400 trucks bringing equipment there. There will be a new factory, latest technology. Then we are putting $100 million as outgrower into the community around farmers growing cotton. Just imagine, multiply 100 million by 25 quarter, you're talking about how much? 2.5 billion dollars. 2.6 billion. You and I are quick at arithmetic. 2.6 billion quarter. And yeah, we love numbers. We love numbers. Because numbers don't lie. Social media, you can post a sentence which is full of lies. And some people will believe you. You post numbers, those who know numbers say, ah, this, this number is wrong. Simple. So this is what we're doing. This is our commitment to assistance. I want to end because of time, just to say to you, you have our support. This is your government. It's not a government on the moon. This is your government where you have our support in the work you do, given your theme today, wonderful theme. The church has its support. Other churches have our support. Board of Christ is one. We're not segregative ourselves. Christian is a Christian. You marry a pagan husband, convert him, as I said earlier on. Pagan wife, convert him. You have a difficult diocesan, sit him down and show them the good ways. <laughs> Even us, you see waywardness in us, sit us down. We are your people, we are your products. Let me say, we wish you well in your conference. I wish I could stay longer and attend some of your sessions, at least those which are not confidential. <laughs> I want to ask you, as part of your outcomes of your conference, checklist a couple of things, if there are any other which your leaders didn't give us already, which have relevance to government, or indeed others for who we can network with or influence so that we can now draw an action list out of your beautiful conference so we can better someone's life in our society, in the country. <laughs> we wish you really, really fruitful liberations. May God bless you all. May God bless our lovely country, Zambia. Ndalumba wumbi. Thank you very much, Bishop Mulenga, Bishop Kasonde, my friends, the assistants here. We are your servants. Make use of us. Send us on errands. What we can will do. What we can't will ask.